Because see what they're doing. Ow. Hey, let's party. Take it home, man. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tony J. Article Book by Chessons Talk Show. Now, I want to thank my brother, Leon Arhaj Aziz Chesson for bringing us into this morning's issue. Uh, this morning, and from now on, I'm going to spend a lot of my time trying to educate my, the youth of Liberia and the youth of anywhere in the world but especially in Liberia. Because as a Liberian elder, I have a unique responsibility to my country, to the young people growing up today in Liberia. Many of my young people in Liberia have lost parents, have lost relatives since the war. We've been through a prolonged civil war. And we have young children that are growing up that have missed childhood. That have no concept of what it is to grow up in a decent environment and grow up to be decent men and women, understanding the things that we need to learn from childhood that will make us productive and better men and women in our society today. So, yes, we have bashed our young children too much for following George Weir, for being gangsters, for, for uh, perpetrating rapes against our young ladies and all these things. All of these things came from the war. All of these things are remnants of our past. And they have not changed because we don't have leaders today. Our leaders are war laws and war criminals. And Ellen Johnson Salif, who came to look for power and money, and to, as a mulatto woman, to rise up in Liberian society and change our laws to benefit her. Now she has done all of that. She has become the first president of Liberia and Africa. And what has all of that gotten her? What has all of that gotten our society? She became 
talking about, she betrayed Do, she betrayed Kuamba, she betrayed everybody. She betrayed the Liberian people by putting George Weir there. She betrayed George Weir. Because George Weir is just a little idiot. All he wants is power and money. He thinks the way to get it now is following the advice of his greedy friends who see that his popularity among the youth can propel him of our societal leadership. And that all of that has happened. We can't change that. There's no way we can go back to time and change that. I'm not a man of revenge. I won't hit nobody and kill nobody. What does that get to bring to me? What satisfaction that brings to me? It doesn't bring me any satisfaction. First of all, I'm a Christian. And before I even go further, let me stop and thank the Lord Jesus Christ for enabling me to produce this show as it is. For giving me the knowledge and wisdom and understanding to know that when you put your mind to something, believing and trusting in your one and only God, anything and everything is possible. And this is the message I want to pass to my young children. <clears throat> because the test of a man is not where you come from. It's not how you grew up. The test of a man is how you end up in life. you successful. Did you achieve your dreams? Did you move your people and your family to the next level? If that what the consciousness of your society or upbringing is, you know, to care for you, to care for your people, to care for your society. This, the, these are the ways I was brought up. These are the principles I have been brought on on. That's why when I see people stealing and doing all these things, it breaks my heart. See, because there's so much out there for all of us. And it doesn't benefit anybody through greed and corruption and evil. They want everything for themselves. So we gotta believe in something. We gotta stand on principles. That's why I'm taking this time to teach my young children. Because with all your parents, with all these guide, this guidance, you now need to learn as young people who are gonna be fathers and mothers, or are already fathers and mothers, to raise your children the right way. So even to, though you did not benefit from the system or may not have benefited from the system as you had hoped, as you struggle for, no matter what people say, whether you want a job, whether the young people who did all of this and uh, ran behind jobs, we have for job because they thought they were going to be leaders. Now you know it's not the way how the world works. You can't run behind people. You gotta run behind ideas and principles and beliefs. The same thing like Christianity or Islam. Those are principles and beliefs. So when you have a God and you have principles and you have beliefs, you become greater. Because men die. People fade away. Things fade. Truth and word and learning. See, what Jesus Christ taught us too, all things will fade away except the word. And that's why when you, he is the word, he said that the word and the truth cannot fade away because it's in writing, it's ideal. And that's what differentiates Christianity and Islam from our Juju gods in Liberia. Because our juju gods come, their teachings come down through tradition, oral teachings. And when you got oral teachings, it can always be diluted by individual's ideals of what that teaching is, or how they want to be interpret that teachings, that teaching. 
But when you have it down in writing, and you understand the, the, the past to the present and the hopes of the future. That's why the whole Bible and the Quran, those are based on all those things. You got three stages in everything. As I told you, the three stages of the Bible. You got the past, you got the current, and you got the hopes for the future. And what are the hopes based on? The hopes are based on what we have learned, what we have experienced, and what we believe in. So we build roots through our posterity, through our children, through our family, so that when we die, our children will grow up with these ideals and roots, and they are the hope that we look for when we plan for the future. So all these things I'm bringing into you, my young children today, so you can understand. Because I will, today I will talk about the three essential things of life. Then tomorrow we'll go into politics. So you can understand, you know, what it means to be involved in societal living. To be involved in societal understanding and success. To be involved with setting the foundation of our society. It's not one group of people no more. Every Liberian has to get involved with understanding what this means. Because once we all understand it and appreciate it, we can pass it on with better understanding, with better hopes for our society and for our country. So, what are the three essential things of life for every human being? All of us have three stages of life. The three stages of life are birth, adolescence, and adulthood. Those are the three stages of life. Past, present, and the future. Everything current and the future and it doesn't matter how long the past was it doesn't matter how long the current situation is but it always depends on what we do now give us that hope so the only thing we have for the future is hope all of us know what we do there is no certainty that what we plan we will succeed there's no such thing. Look at Liberia since 1980. All the things we planned. We have had coups, uprisings, civil war. So sometimes I've been sitting there thinking, I said, damn, if we wanted to do things in our country, we couldn't. Because the climate and condition of the country didn't permit us. So let me get into my lesson because. Once my young people understand the significance of these three stages of life, we can pass it on to our children and ensure that their understanding of their life plights is significant to their successes, to their advancement, and their collective growth and development in a wholesome so the first stage of life is birth how does that how, how does that impact our lives first stage in our lives birth and birth starts from one year old, from the day you are born, until you are six years old. All of that is birth. Why? Because in birth, you are under your parental control. And that's where you get your elemental and foundational education and introduction into your life. That's why when you are under your parental control, it is so significant because your parents are the first people to teach you 
to bring you into the world, to set your standards of understanding what is expected of you, what you can do and what you cannot do as a child. So they start to set the disciplinary standard for you. They start to step the, they set the standard of love. What is love? All these things impact your life. They start with your education. They start with your introduction to the world you come into. They start with setting your thought pattern of how, what, 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 setting your patterns of right and wrong. They are the first people to start setting your pattern, you know? Because even when you're growing up, when you're running straight, the spank your hand, stop it, stop it, stop it, sit up, sit up, you know? That's how you start. You create the baby, when the baby grows to the next stage and start walking, you start guiding them, you know? Teaching them not to put their finger in the plug, not to play with the fire, not to do with these things. Those are the basic things we start teaching people and introducing them to, to the, our life. See, because in every child's upbringing, there are different things. Children mature differently. It depends on their parental upbringing too. It also depends on their environmental upbringing. Okay? Some kids grow bigger than kids in, in size, in, in, in looks, in appearance, and in maturity. Many things some guys were doing when, when we were small at my age, my syncretic boys, I wasn't into all of that. See, but that was the parental control. That's how, how, why our parents are significant to us in our lives. So we have some parents, that were the elite parents are different from parents in the street. You see our government in future then how they raise the children different. Why? Because there are many things that impact the growth of the children. One, your government, you, they are educated. Government officials are expected to be highly educated people in our society. So we look to them on a different stand, on a different stage. Why? Because they're supposed to be the enlightened. They're supposed to be the people we protect. Those are the people we hope to set the standard to advance our, not only their own family, but our whole society. So their children have to be protected. Their children are exposed to the elite and educated in our society. So their education from small is different from our education in the street. See, like me and my father's children, I had to struggle more because they were born with my father and their mother who were professionals, who were educated people. So. Their upbringing were different. The things that they learned, the things that they heard their parents talking, the things that they, that, that they, the people that they met, their relationship, all of those were different from my relationships. Because as an elite of our society, brothers and sisters were exposed to my father's friends who were also elites in our society. You see. Because big people follow big people. Big people relate to big people. You see, and we're complaining about the same thing in Liberia. The government future not sending their children to government school. See, in spite of the fact, it is also reminiscence of what, a reminiscence of what societal upbringing and living has been from time immemorial where the leaders and the elites are treated different than the masses of the people in the proletariat. So we have to understand those things and that will make us different because once you grow in a household with educated parents, with educated people and relatives, your outlook to the it's completely different from the people who grew up with our parents, without understanding what life meant, means to them. We are seeing people exposed to knowledge and wisdom, 
You're not exposed to all those things from childhood. So right there from the start, you are disadvantaged. You see, you are disadvantaged. And that's why I'm so thankful that when my aunt was dying, the, one of the last things she said to me, you want to be like your children, father, your father's children, get education, get your education. Because she told me, she was telling me on her dying bed that I'm disadvantaged. And I will never achieve my freedom. She said, my freedom, if you want to free your freedom, be like your father's children, get your education. Because my father's children were more advanced and advantaged than me. They grew up in a household with leaders and educated people who views and outlook to life were different than my aunt and my uncle who raised me. So, one of the things she helped me with throughout my childhood, I was always exposed to my father. Because despite living home, I always used to leave and go to my father's house to live too. But sometimes my brother, then when time to come home, school to school, I go back to my aunt. So I was exposed to that life. See? And as a child, I know my aunt had raised me never to like what other people had. So despite the fact that I knew my brothers and sisters lived a different life than me, it didn't bother me. I never really thought about that, you know? And that's what is instilled in me still to this day. So you see how the of your childhood follow you. That today, with all the war and coup going on in Liberia, yes, it bothers me because people I know have changed. People I know have dramatic. People I know have suffered. You know, but some suffer worse than me. So, when you look at all those kind of things around you, there are so many things to be thankful for. You see? And I love the, you know, despite the fact that it was hard. When I look at my life right now, I look at what I'm doing. I'm so thankful to God. Because this, these, these things are challenging. You gotta be educated and understand what you're doing. And be blessed with the finances. To be doing this show to you for you it's expensive. And ho, ho, you know, my business. Because I had to learn all these things. And once you get exposed to the internet, these people compounding you to buy this, buy that, buy that. And if you don't slow down and took your time to read and understand, you end up in trouble. You end up in big financial trouble. Because no matter what they tell you, it will be free, free. When you start dealing with it, it you see it's not that free. It's free for a limited time. Then they start putting an ass on your page and start cutting you off and all these things. But you have to understand what you're doing. That's what I'm bringing down to you. So from birth, your parents set the standard. Your brothers and sisters, your relatives in the house. Because from birth, you are not exposed to any outside elements that drastically impact your life. Wherever you go, your parents taking you. Whatever you do, your parents there. Whatever you say, your parents there to guide you. So, from your birth to six, seven, eight years old, even up to ten years old, you are still a child under your parents' guidance and protection. But the reason why it differs a little bit, because from birth to six years old, you are strictly under your parents. They guide you, and there are disadvantages to that too. You know, sometimes your parents can add to your own failures in life. Over protection, over love, their, gel their feelings toward other people and other things, and how they 
impact you with those feelings. All those things add on to you. You see, like my ma, she came back mad with my pa because their relationship, you know, I want to involve me in that. That's not my business. Luckily for me, I had my aunt to guide me and say, look, you take care of your life. Don't involve yourself in all of that. You see? So I understood. So if you don't have parents to guide you and protect you and teach you, you always be in trouble. And that's why, <clears throat> no matter what happened, I could always go back to my aunt and my uncle to refer to the upbringing they gave me. I could have been wayward. I told you how they used to flock me. I grew up in the environment of the pool. I grew up among people who were destitute. People who did anything to survive. So I had to be checked on all the time. And the only thing in our society, in our Liberian society, that is of great advantage to all of us is that our society is an African society, a communal society, where it takes a village to raise a child. And we understand that concept through our traditional and native upbringing. You see, when I say native, I'm talking about our Liberian upbringing, that native to us. So despite our tribal and anything, we have our own innate native upbringing. These are the things that impact us as Liberian people. It set the standard for us. You see, so our society is very helpful to us because despite all the things that go on in our society, we take care of each other by communicating with our parents, with our relatives, people calling your house and reporting you, people go, you see, and all the things we have missed them because you all miss your childhood. And when you miss your childhood, it's, you can't get it back. See, but one of the hope is you can learn to treat your children the way they should be treated so they can get the childhood that you didn't have. And we talk about Senator Darren, Darius Dillon. From the first time I saw Darius Dillon, he reminded me of those days of old Liberia when we talk to for each other, when we reported our children to their parents so their parents can discipline them when they did things in the community, when all of us were involved in our community and not hating one each another, but trying to live in peace and harmony with each other and understanding that we are, for, we are one people. We build from different tribes and groups, but when it comes to being the foundational leaders of our country, we are one people. And it's, these are the teachings that we get from childhood, okay? So when we get to sixth, seventh grade, <clears throat> our childhood start to change because we start to lead the protection of our parents, the teaching of our parents, the love of our parents. And you see, that's when it becomes very challenging because if your parents show you over love and over protection, it will be very challenging leaving that, breaking away from that love and protection to, to be, meet the challenges of our world. Because once you start going to kindergarten now and, and, and doing your, 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 how long you stay in kindergarten, one or two years? If you stay, where, where people, I know you stay from, people go from six to seven or eight. So it depends. I started six to seven because my older people believe that if you start a child off in school under seven years old, they don't really grasp the learning the way they're supposed to get it. So they believe that when you start at seven years old, you are the child is grown mature enough to know and understand the changing world that they're going into, okay? So, 
Some people start their kids off at six. Some people can start their kids off at four, depending on, how, on the development of the kid. I told you that all of us are different. All of us are here, but people mature differently. People learn differently. All of us are different. And when you find out, that's why your parents are there for, because they find out your weaknesses from the very smart and from the early ages, if your parents are educated parents. If your parents understand the processes of formal education, they will know when you need to advance certain skills from childhood. They will be able to detect early autism. All those things because they're knowledgeable, they're reading, they're watching TV, we understand it, they're not watching cartoons. You see, and that's the difference. You see, when I watch TV, I want to see a variety of shows. I want to see the news. After the news, I get tired with the news. I want to go into maybe a movie. I want to go into a documentary. I want to go into something else. Whereas, if you come from a home where you're not educated, where you don't have that uh, relaxation of mental diversity, changing things in your life, you will be one way. And when you see some people, grown men, they just sit there and watch cartoon all day. <laughs> just laugh all day. Some people just want to watch sports all day. Some people just want to play basketball all day. Or watch movies all day. And for men, I mean, I get boring with all, I get bored of all of that. You know, I come home, I see, I can't watch movie every day. There's a time for movie, and there's a time for other things. There's a time for teaching you, and there's a time for sleeping. So once you understand all these different areas, you know how to handle your life better, okay? Now, I'm that's all the time on the birth area because that's the foundation where our parents are most needed, where you people, you young children who have children today, need to spend time with your children and pay attention to them. And I heard Sonny Boy Smith talking, Timothy Sonny Boy Smith talking about it. How you're advising people in the diaspora how they need to spend time with their children and their family and take time to teach them. See? And these are the significant things in life that are very important to us. Because no matter how big we are, we always can refer back to our childhood and our upbringing as the foundation of building us to be men and women. Production success as we are today see so once you cover that stage when you reach the 10 years sometimes 11 sometimes 12 you change from that status again seven to ten years is your introduction to the outside world to go into kindergarten to go into first grade to learning other how to deal with friends how to get uh, and I had to get experiences, you know, with bullying, with, 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 with fighting, with fussing, with this, with this uh, discipline. All these things that your first levels of introduction into the world. Then when you get to 10th grade, 10 year old, 10 to 12 year old starts your second stage of life. That stage is what we call adolescence or your teen ages. It starts from 10, why? Because of the development of children. There are some children who are 10 years old, you look at them, they look 15, 16. There are some, they may not be smart, but their ages put them in a different bracket. See, with other kids who are older than them, you know, because size, the sizes and all of that, they may be able to do things younger kids can do, uh, shorter kids can do, or smaller kids can do, and the bigger kids may reach out to them to do things with them, like play sports, teach them to start playing basketball and all these kind of things. So their relationship change when they start playing basketball with older kids. You know, the younger kids who are not into that kind of thing, their relationship change with them. 
or some kids at 10 years old are smart for their ages. You can't hold them back because no matter how you try to hold them back, their, not, their, 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 their educational advancement and all the kinds of them to go into a different era. So that's why we say from 10 to 12, you begin your adolescence. Okay? So 10 years old, they get double promotion. From 10 years old, they move them from that, that class area and put them in the other area because of their special skills and abilities. You see, that's why now, these days, when a teenager commits a crime, they look at the activities of the crime, not, not necessarily crime. Even when you had a, have a car accident and you're 10 years old, they look at your ability. Are you more advanced than a normal 10 years old? Are you advanced enough to handle uh, 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 dangerous, dangerous equipment? A vehicle is a dangerous equipment for a child. So once you, you can get a license, you can operate a, a tractor, you're on a farm, you can do different things that adults can do, you are held to a different standard than a child who can do those things. So that's where the different standards in our lives come. Now, teenage, the law has changed for teenagers now. When teenagers commit crimes that are expected of adults, they get punished as adults. Okay. So, because the pun the crime, punishment can affect the crime. And all of that goes on. So, with that is from 12 up to 18 or 21 depending on the law, because the law guide us to some laws to be adult, to be out of your teen, your adolescent age or your teen age, you gotta reach 21, okay? You can drink at 21, you can do your man at 21, okay? So even if you are free at 18, you are still not a man, because you can't drink, and there are certain things you can't do, you know? To get the full experiences, of life so that's your second stage of life at your adolescence you begin to learn how to take more responsibility yourself you begin to learn the true essence of right and wrong you begin to learn that you can be held accountable and responsible for your actions it's despite the fact you, your parents are still there to protect you once you begin begin to grow and become a teenage and go out into the public on your own and interacting with people in society on your own, your life has changed. You are no longer under your parental control. You are more moving towards self enlightenment, self advancement, self control. Those are the things that change us in those years. And it makes us more responsible and accountable because we're coming from our childhood. We're still coming from our uh, early ages with the experiences we bring to enhance our growth as adolescents. So that's when the law begins to hold you more accountable because at adolescence, we expect you to have a certain knowledge, to have a certain understanding of society, to have an understanding of what is right and what is wrong. And when once we expect you to know that, we begin to hold you accountable for your own action. You see? Same thing I told you about the law holding teenagers for their actions. Instead of judging and holding them in jail at 18, that's not the law no more. You see? The law looks at your crime. And if your crime is the crime of children your age will normally commit, they can put you in the training school, they can put you in the lower training facilities. But if you commit murder, heinous crimes and all of that, they look at you to the actions of people who do things that you have done. Many kids are not involved in murder, in hate crimes, and all of that. 
So they look at all of that. And that's when the law begin to look at you. More as a man, more as a as a person that taking responsibility for your own lives. Okay? So when you when you go through those years of adolescence, you have to understand that all your education adds to your upbringing. And understanding that we're all parents, school is a significant element to your understanding and living. Why? Because when you're a student and you have advanced uh, uh, interest in school and desires to excel, that's the challenge of your mind. No matter what your parents did to you for you in your early ages, when you develop the essence of life and knowledge and understanding, you begin to seek out those things for yourself. You want to build your mind. You want to go to school. Because you see, the people that go to school and get educated, lives are more advanced and better. They understand things better. They teach you better. Their lives are better. Because of knowledge, wisdom, and education. And no matter how you wise you are, if you say you're too smart, you don't want to go to school, you will lose. I've had so many friends who were smart and they were good in math and everything, but they felt they had to come to America to get education because education in Liberia was not enough. And that's, that destroyed them. Because like they were educated. They, they wanted to excel to things that they did not have, they did not have the means to excel to. And you see that word pride and greed and uh, uh, egotism set into you. Because you gotta be humble. You gotta be humble. And if your job, if your desire is to gain education, you have to know that whatever education is, you pursue it. Because that is your only hope. Now when I graduated from Cardinal University College, I had nowhere else to go. I had no mother, no father, nobody to help me. So I had to think for myself. And the greatest thing I want to ever do was go back to school. So I had a chance to go to law school. That was the greatest comfort to me. That's why I had no problem in life. People I was going to law school. So I had hope for a better day. I had hope. Even if I didn't leave Liberia, I could help people in my country. So these are the things that gave us the second stage in life. That is the significance of that life. When you are an adolescent, you have different opportunities. But you have to understand that whatever opportunities come your way, you cannot forsake your former education. Why? Because it is that paper, that honest paper, that shows the world that you have reached a second level of life and succeeded. With all that paper, you haven't succeeded. And if you go and copy somebody else's, else's degree, you will not fit in the path, you will not fit in the process. See? Because you dishonest. You cannot speak like a real man. And most of the people who excel, look at Donald Trump today. All the way Donald Trump president in America, people still telling him how he paid somebody to do his, his test. Some, some, they know it. And said he'll go kill up all the people who know about it. But once you do something illegal and somebody know and Donald Trump had been caught in many things. Look at childhood. He paid people to take the exam to go to school, to business school. He, he never really attended school. Now yeah, it is again in life. 
He's doing all this corrupt thing against America. Against America. Because of greed. It's all America. See, so no matter how smart you are, if you don't have the essence of education, foundation of true knowledge, you have problem. You always pretend you this and that, but the true color will always come out. Look at Donald Trump today; he's a murderer. There's a thousands of Americans because of greed. Yes. These are the things you have to learn. So when you become adolescents, you are held at a greater standard. Understanding life, right from wrong. Understanding what society expects of you as a young man. If you want to be a leader, what you have to do from those ages. And that's where our stages come from, corrupt leaders, from honest leaders. That I told you when we were small, how we used to go to census and people used to be collecting money from the people in the villages. That's where corruption starts. Where it starts. And when you into that kind of corruption and you never learn, it becomes a way of life for you. And the third stage of life is adulthood. We become man and woman. We have responsibilities of your own. Everything is yourself. Then you look back and ask yourself, what has all my past contributed to my life? to ask yourself that's this final self evaluator now because what are you successful or not whether you have achieved something or not the evaluation of yourself because when you become a man if you're not if you don't have the consciousness to sit down and evaluate your past and see how you keep up I, you will never understand and appreciate who you are in the world. Share my youth CDC. You people are adolescents now. You have past childhood in the area where you got to sit down now and start understanding right from wrong, understanding truth from failure, understanding what is significant in your life as young children and as fathers and mothers because you're having children. How you will set the foundation for your children. How you prepare your future for the next, the final stage in your life, adulthood. This is a challenge. My Liberian youth, you don't have mother and fathers. My Liberian youth, you don't have people to take care of you and guide you the way you're supposed to be guided. Everybody talking about CDC and this and this. You people are young people. Understanding politics is the second stage of your life that is now in the stage of the adulthood. So I have just tried to guide you on what all these stages mean. Now that you are young adult people, you have to sit down now. Not following, you're not following George Weah. You're not following uh, Koji. You're not following people. Sit down and look at yourselves and ask yourselves, where is my life today? What is my hope today for the next stage of my life, which is the final stage, adulthood? If you're 21 and over and stay calling yourself a youth, because in Liberia there's no hope for our people. We have no jobs, we have no opportunities for people to excel. Everybody there for themselves, stealing money, or our government for future for time and more have stolen and benefited themselves. So how?
OG and all these people contributed. And you in school. You gotta go back to school. Even if you can't go to the class or school, do they have vocational school for you? Or you in a trade to make your own money. Government can't support you. Government can't give you money. No, that's not what our government is for. Our government is there to take care of everybody in our society. But right now, our leaders are rapidly corrupt. And our young children, you people cannot be continually used to perpetrate the evils of our native people and leaders. No, no, no. The educated people know better. Their children know better. And they take advantage of the system too. My concern is for my young indigenous children who need to be led and guided on the path to lead you to successes in our country, in our leadership, and in our government. Now you're going to start sitting down and asking yourself, how has our leader been? How have we stood up what we want in our lives? How have we dreamed and now want to follow? Don't let nobody tell you what you should do. Go to school, get your early foundational learning. See what you're good in. See what you like to do. Try to pursue it. Sometimes people will try to persuade you with their own things. Nothing is easy. Nothing is free. You have to understand that. And when you got that foundational understanding, you got to be your own man and women. You don't have mother and fathers. First, you got to find a God. You can't go to be juju people all the time, paying for juju. No, there's a way you can find your own God. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm a Christian. I don't have, I'm not a wealthy man. I don't have to pay my God nothing. And you got to find your God too. If you're a Christian, you got to read the Bible. That's why education is so significant. Because if you're not educated, you can't do anything on your own. You always got to depend on people. You see, I just did my show here. Look at my show. I didn't have to go to nobody. I sat on the computer and learned this thing. Over and over, and it came. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be That is the Christian teaching that I have depended upon. Set me free. Every day I thank Jesus Christ because that is the foundation of his love for his followers. So no matter who your God is, find your God and let your God help you and teach you no, my God is Christian. Jesus Christ and his teachings are divine and profound because you cannot go wrong with his teaching. He told us if we want it, we gotta go after it. If we want it, we gotta strive for it. We gotta understand it and go after it. You can't be jealous and following other people, fighting other, trying to hurt other people for what they got. No. How does that benefit you? It doesn't benefit you. It just makes you a, a useless human being. You want something and you believe in something. Pray and go. Strive. Seek. Knock. Ask. So that's my lesson for the day. Just wonder you ought to understand the three of your life. Birth, essence, and once we are we are we are conscious of which stage in our lives we are at and how meaningful it is to us to seek further education, 
to seek to understand what we are and how significant our lives are to promoting our successes and our advancement on a personal level. And we'll understand what it means. and what to expect for them and what they should expect from us as men and women. Productive men and women. Sensible men and women. Following the dreams of George Weah, OG and all of them, and making your thing that their dream is your dream, Everybody, opportunity to pursue your own dream under the constitutional government. So next time we we'll talk, I'll go in depth in the government and I'll try as much as I can to lay out the foundation of why it is important to have good leadership, to have good people who care for you to follow whatever principles of government your government say you have. Strive to understand it. That's education too. And we need that education to ensure that our leaders give us what they're supposed to give us to benefit our lives. Okay? Now we are all in our adolescence. In Liberia, majority of the population is youth. You people have to understand that you have profound duty and role to play in Liberian society. And you need to understand what societal upbringing and life means to you. To hold your government responsible, provide the things for you as adolescent, as youth, to enhance your growth, advancement, and productivity as productive men and women and citizens. Of the public of Siberia. Aluta! Continue. My course has ended. So, I will see you all tomorrow and we'll talk about something else. But I just want you all to know charity begins at home. So, when I start teaching and going into teaching my youth about the essence of life, they have to understand the three stages of life. And in these three stages of life, your parents, for Provide food, shelter, and clothing when you're a baby. As you grow up into the adolescence, you begin to learn how to provide for your own self, how to provide your own food, clothing, and shelter, and understand the essence and importance of these three things in everybody's lives. But you also got to know that to get these three things, education, the education in your mind, that what people say, at least get a college degree, at least finish high school, at least do this. Because if you don't have a level of education, you will not excel. You got to get formal education. Because with formal education, it opens your mind and your eyes to dealing with other people who are in the society and are advanced in their knowledge and understanding. So the more you, you learn, the more you see the need to go further. That was some people get high school degree first. After so many years, they said, nah, I gotta go back and get my master's. And they get up and go back because they get more encouraged and see the challenges in the real world that they have to face. So young people, follow your dreams. You wanna be educated? There's nothing stopping you. All of us don't have to go to private schools. Get your education any way you can. But understand that many of you have missed the early stages of childhood. You have missed all those things because of our prolonged war and the ills of our society. Now, out of adolescence, you have to start thinking as young men and women who are preparing your lives for the next stage of adulthood. And even if you're adult and still calling yourself a youth, the time for you to be conscious of who you are and what your standard in society is, is now. 
our society will change for the better. But before that change, our young people have to know what it means to be men and women of a constitutional issue as of tomorrow. Aluta, continue the teaching and the struggle.